You are now listening to the Pelicans post game report. Flash report. The Athletic reporting the Pelicans are fielding trade calls involving JJ Redick and Lonzo Ball. New Orleans holds the second worst record out west right now. Brian, will the Pelicans be sellers before the deadline? Yes, and not just those two guys. Eric Bledsoe has also been involved in trade talks, and in a lot of cases, it's the Pelicans making the calls. There is interest there to move out uh, some of the veteran guards to make room for Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Kira Lewis, their first-round draft pick, to get those guys some playing time. Um, Pelicans are going to be making some changes, I believe. It was interesting to see because I thought this was a very tough coach such as Stan Van Gundy could come in here and gel with these younger players. Obviously, it looks like he can't, so I expect them to also be sellers during the uh, trade deadline. I'm still getting used to a world where we're talking about veterans getting traded, and Lonzo Ball is in that category. He's a vet now? Are we all old? <laughs> we're all old. Okay, just What's checking. going on, Pelican family? Thank you for joining me for Pelican Flash Report. I'm BQ chiming in on this thing, and uh, what you just heard was a uh, small section of the show the jump as Brian Winhurst along with Matt Barnes commented about what's going on with the Pelicans and what's interesting about the whole dynamic is you heard what Wendy said Wendy was basically breaking down the fact that the Pelicans are looking to move out the veteran guards for younger guards to give an opportunity for NAW and for Kira uh, Lewis Jr. KLG as I call him to be able to step up and play more. Now, we knew this was eventually going to happen because the Pelicans are not really looking good right now. They're not looking good at all, to be honest with you. They had a terrific win recently up against a shorthanded uh, team in the Washington Wizards where any win in the NBA is a good win. We got to keep stockpiling these things. But the team is not complete, and part of that is the bench. We've covered that on the Pelican Post Game Report. Also, please subscribe if you aren't a subscriber. Hit the like button and hit the notification bell for more content, news, notes, recaps, everything. Hit that damn notification bell and join the Pelican flock. And don't get flocked up. Hit that damn subscribe button. But anyway, let's get back into it. What's interesting about this whole matrix is the fact that we understood to a degree that the Pelicans needed to fix the defensive side of the ball to have success in the NBA. But as a result, defensively, we're still not that good, even though we're better than what we were last year, I want to say. But offensively, we were a lot slower. So, and to a part, you see that the change in philosophy, which Elvin Gentry had, which is just run and then, you know, whatever, we're going to focus on the offensive side of it. Stan Van Gundy is quite the opposite. He's going to focus on the defensive side you talk about cutting down of the turnovers, uh, hitting of the free throws, the fundamental stuff that we just simply are not doing right now. <laughs> We're not playing very good defense in large part. We have some stands, mind you. We play some good defense in spurts, but consistently we're not locking down teams like we're supposed to do. And of course, offensively speaking, we're not flowing for full stretches of games. We get dammed up, the balls uh, stop circulating, and ultimately we end up uh, becoming stagnant. Teams catch us and even pass us, and we find ourselves trailing teams in, in games which we can't necessarily uh, complete. So with that being said, what Winhurst is basically saying, not only is Lonzo Ball and J.J. Reddit in these talks, but also Eric Bledsoe as well, and any and everybody not named Brandon Ingram, not named uh, Zion Williamson, not named, uh, I would even throw Steven Adams in there with some Q, you could throw him in there. I, no, they're not gonna move Steven Adams, he's a big part of this. But KLJ and NAW, those guys are not in there as well. So with that being said, we knew that they would have to make a move and do something uh, to move this team on the plus side of things. That's what it, that's basically what it's coming down to. So. That's a bit of information to drop on you guys to understand the Pelicans are. And then the really key thing is they're initiating a discussion. Not It's not like teams are calling the Pelicans saying, what about this guy? What about that guy? They're initiating the, the talks and it's leaking to the point where Bledsoe, Ball, and Reddit also realize that. And of course, we had, uh, uh, you know, Ball ended up uh, having an injury against the Wizards. We'll see how that impact anything moving forward. But... We knew eventually when you draft KLJ with that 13th overall pick in the draft that he would have to see the floor at some point. And of course, the fact that they didn't extend out Alonzo or Josh early on in the season while drafting Kiara Lewis Jr. 
means that he'll have a position in the team moving forward, obviously, right, family? So with that being said, what NAW brings as a result of poor play from the starters that went in there or injuries that occurred, what we can be able to see NAW get in there, you can see that he gives effort on the defensive side of the ball. He's not the best defender in the world, but he's still very much learning that aspect of his game, but he'll shoot your goddamn lights out. He's a total confident shooter. Uh, he gets to the basket. I mean, listen, I love NAW's game, man. And of course, if you compare and give more minutes to him and KLJ, these young players, man, with man, you can see that tempo picking up because KLJ is is probably going to be one of the faster, if not the fastest point guard in this business. That's certainly how he played in college, you know. So he's a guy that can help speed up the the pace of the a team if, if Van Gundy allows that to occur. So a lot being said that, but we knew when the trade happened for a guy, uh, when you brung a guy like Eric Bledsoe here via trade, that ultimately he would not be uh, here for the entire summation of the season unless we just had that great chemistry and they didn't want to break the team up. But with the team struggling like this, obviously you got to shift into, listen, man, we're struggling. We're almost at the bottom of the, in the Western Conference uh, here. We most certainly aren't looking like a playoff team right now. But you see the effort right there by certain pieces, but not as a full team. And that's troublesome because Stan Van Gundy's not playing portions of the bench. He doesn't trust these guys. Willie Hernan Gomez hasn't seen the floor. He doesn't trust them. Uh, Winyan Gabriel, who does provide that hustle mentality, doesn't trust him. He hasn't seen any minutes. He's healthy now. But Stan Van Gundy said that he's not up to speed. Well, by the looks of it, a lot of these guys off the bench are not up to speed. So with that being said, the Pelicans looking to offset, get rid of J.J. Reddit, who is their best shooter. But hopefully you bring shooters on the team. You know, we, we know about Kelly Oubre Jr., who does provide a, a bit of versatility. He's a passionate guy, plays with his heart on his sleeve. He's a hometown kid. That'll be interesting. But he's shooting 22% from three-point uh, three range this year. Prior to last year, he was, what, in the 35, 32? 30, he was 32 north of 32 last year. Averaged uh, above 17 points a contest last year. That's how he got the big contract. But ultimately, with that being said is, we'll see where they're trying to go with this thing. But hopefully, if you're moving your best shooter in J.J. Reddit and a, and a big guard like Lonzo Ball, a veteran like Eric Bledsoe out the, the open up minutes for KLJ and NAW. Hopefully you're bringing shooters uh, or veterans or uh, a stretch big or something. We need a stretch for big off the bench, man. I mean, any a, a guy in the mode of the McKeith Morris, the Morris twins, a guy like Larry Nance, like one of the uh, Pelican publications keep pushing. We need a guy like that off the bench to help out the starting guys. So let's see what these what they do here. Pelicans did mow down Washington. We got some stiffer foes leading on. But anyway, that's some of the latest news on Pelican Talk. We'll keep you guys in tune with all the latest facts and stats, recaps and trade rooms. All of that dealing with your New Orleans Pelicans. So that'll do it for the Pelican Flash Report. I'm Big Q Chime and please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Please hit the notification bell for more recaps and news notes and items from your New Orleans Pelicans and join the flock by subscription and join the realest show talking Pelican talk. We are the Pelican Post Game Report. Thank you for chiming in. Go Pels. And don't get flocked. Subscribe now and stay up to date for all things New Orleans Pelicans.